Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Reddit stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider a like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story. Much love, guys. Now, today's first story comes from Cultural Afternoon 313 from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit and says, Am I the Arsehole for refusing to share a single piece of my mum's art? My parents got married straight out of high school, had me 25 female right away, and then split up when I was three, but they stayed close friends till the day my mother died. My dad remarried Anna when I was seven. She had a daughter, Eve, 22 female. She had our brother Jake, 16 male together. Jake was really sick when he was a toddler, so our parents spent a lot of time at the hospital with him, and I spent a lot of time at my mum's house. Eve's dad worked weird hours, so my mum was more than happy to take Eve too most of the time. She loved hanging out with kids. My mum was a talented and passionate artist, and she was determined to foster a love of art in us. And she did for both of us, but Eve is far more talented than I am, and her and my mum bonded over their shared love of painting. My mother passed away suddenly this January. I was always extremely close with her, and I was and still am completely devastated. I still can't accept that she's gone forever. I miss her so, so much. In late April, I finally got up the spirit to start organizing her things. Eve approached me after I mentioned that I was going to my mother's home to sort through some stuff and she asked me if she could look through my mum's paintings and have a few as keepsakes because my mother was such an inspiration for her. I don't want to and I refused not the paintings. I'm willing to give her clothes, jewelry, furniture, almost anything, but the paintings and journals are my closest thing I have left to my mum. There's pieces of her soul in there. It's not just stuff. They're the most personal items she left, and I don't want to let a single one go. Eve got really upset and said she didn't care about any of the other things either, and she didn't think she was asking for that much. She said my mother was an important person in her life and that they had a strong relationship. Eve believes that if my mother would have left her something, if she had the opportunity to decide. I still said no, and Eve went to her mum to complain, and now my immediate family is torn on the issue and arguing when we see each other. My dad understands, but thinks I can give up one or two, and that I might change my mind in a couple of years once the pain isn't so fresh. And I do think that could have happened before, but Eve and Anna are pushing me so hard on it and being passive aggressive towards me. And I feel completely different about them now. We all used to be close. I understand she wasn't a stranger to my mum, but that's just not enough to me. I think my own grief is bigger and to ask me for such a personal thing so soon after a death was insensitive. And I'm ever more upset that they don't even see the irony of Eve sending her own living mother after me for my dead mum's stuff. My boyfriend wants me to just give her one and repair my family, so I stop tormenting myself. But I think I want to stand my ground here, so am I the arsehole. Edit. I just want to say this here because I've read a lot of comments about this and this isn't about jealousy of Eve. I can admit I was a little jealous when I was younger because I had ideas that I couldn't properly get out and it seemed unfair that they could. When I got into high school and discovered the medium that worked for me, film, the frustration I felt at not being able to express my creative thoughts properly melted away and the jealousy went with it. This is fully about what my mother's paintings mean to me. Damn, this is a difficult one for me. You know, I've been through grief and, and, and dealing with possessions and, and all this kind of thing in the last few years or so. And the only way I can relate to this one with a, a similar kind of story is my mum has always had this this jewelry tree she always likes sort of like gold and stuff like that she's a bit like mr t <laughs> but she didn't always wear it and she had this it was like a tree basically on her dresser and she, her, she would hang her jewelry off it and she'd have her rings on it etc etc and just jump in straight away and say this wasn't about monetary value or anything like that but our niece always had like uh, a real love for this and a love for her jewelry as well it, it meant a lot as in memories for my niece so when the time came it was decided that you know this jewelry tree would, would be passed to 
our niece because of the memories that she had for our mum as well. You know, one of us could have taken it and, and done whatever with it, but she's got those memories that bond with, with our mum as well. And I think it was important to give, you know, that peace to her. And I struggle to call anyone an arsehole in this situation. I think them harassing you and, and, and getting people to gang up on you is absolutely wrong. And, and I think that is very much arsehole behavior in my opinion. And I don't want to put words in people's mouths or anything like that because everyone's grieving. Everyone's having a tough time at the moment. So I'm going to have to come at it from what I feel like I would do in that situation. And I would definitely be thinking from like my mother's point of view and how would she be feeling this? Would she want her to have one of those paintings? And I think she would because of the bond that they have, even if it's just one, you know, and you decided which one it was. I can totally understand that it'd be incredibly difficult to hand that over. But I think when the time comes and you feel comfortable, because clearly it's not, it might not be the right time right now, for yourself, for Eve, for your mum, possibly handing one of those paintings over. And that's just from my point of view. You need to make this decision yourself. You know, like I always say, we all grieve in many different ways. And as, I think as long as it's healthy, there's no wrong way to grieve. We also had like a bit of a similar-ish thing with my parents wedding rings and and what happens with them because of the memories attached and you know we could have all we could have all said oh i want them because of such and such but we all understood how much they meant to the next brother up from me and how much comfort they would give him and the memories he had with those as well and like the jewelry tree the rings etc we know they're going to a good place we know they're going to be cared for they're going to be loved they're going to be cherished and they're going to bring that person comfort as well again potentially controversial take i don't know it's just the way that i feel about it but harley business says not the arsehole the giving of gifts is an act of generosity if you aren't feeling it you should not give your choice no matter what anyone else thinks or feels ray of f sunshine says i think this is more no one's an arsehole here than not the arsehole they're both grieving and grief does terrible things to people. Trick says, so harassing a grieving daughter isn't arsehole behavior. Weird, because hard arsehole behavior in my book. Craft Girl says agreed. She should have asked once, then let it go. But instead, she kept asking, then brought in the whole family into the situation. Nick Farr says, no one's an arsehole here. I don't think this is about the paintings as much as it is about your grieving. Ask for time to grieve and process. Use that time to figure out what your mum would have wanted to do. Ask yourself if it's fair to hold on to all the pieces of your mum or whether she'd want you to share those she was closest to. Haunted Fruit says not the arsehole. I ended up giving away a lot of my dad's things to my brother and his friends out of guilt after he passed away and I regret it regularly. Though, if you're open to it, ask Eve if she'd be open to prints of the paintings you could make for her. Maybe also communicate with her, as you said in this post, that the wound is still fresh and you'll reconsider when time has passed. Opie says prints are a really good idea that I hadn't considered. I don't know the first thing about it, but I'll start looking into how possible it would be for me. Luna May 196 says, I'm so sorry for your loss. I don't want to call you an asshole because what you are going through is horrible and grief can cause a lot of emotions. But you say that they shared a bond, especially through the paintings. I understand that the trauma from your loss is making it hard to part with them, depending on how many there were that she left. I'd seriously urge you to consider parting with one, even if it's just one. Eve is also grieving, not the same as your grief, but grief nonetheless. In quotes, her and my mum bonded over their shared love of painting. She said my mother was an important person in her life and that they shared a strong relationship. And then says they bonded over some of those paintings. She was your mother, but other people still had close relationships with her and want to cherish memories with her too. I lost someone who was close to me a few years ago when I discovered that I wasn't able to hold on to any of the things we made memories with because of direct family members refused to part with them. It hurt a lot. I understood it and let it go because grief is a huge, painful thing, but others are feeling it too. Edit. I'm not condoning Eve's actions. The way Eve is handling being denied is not right. However, she is also dealing with grief, which can make tensions high and emotions run rampant. I hope that they can overcome this and learn healthier coping methods. 
OP should not feel pressured or bullied into making a certain decision if they, they do not feel fully comfortable with it. Please do not mistake my opinion or advice for pushing them to do something they don't want to. If they decide that they don't want to, they are valid in their choice and feelings. Absolutely. Just to jump on the back of that, that goes with my comment as well. I wouldn't feel negatively towards OP if they decided not to hand over any of those paintings in the end. And life sucks so badly says, did your mum leave the paintings to you personally? OP says, her will only covered her house and financials. Everything was left to me. The paintings are part of the contents of her house. She was young and healthy. She thought she had 25 years and unborn grandchild and nieces and nephews to consider before even thinking about who would get personal items. The house was left to me, so her paintings will all stay where they are for now at least. I won't be moving in for a while, I don't think. There's a lot, but we talked about her art all the time, and I can hear her telling me about each particular piece when I took them. And she kept art journals and the reference pieces she was working on. I can't handle the idea of one day reading the entry but not being able to see the piece she was writing about. I know it sounds dumb, but I need it to be complete. The OP updates their post eight months later and says, It's been a while, but I was thinking about my last post and thought I'd make an update. It's kind of a mess and I can't make it flow like a story, so I'm going to do bullet points. The new year marked the one year anniversary of my mum's death. I've been feeling more stable the last few months, but now I feel like I'm right back where I started. I started seeing a counsellor this summer, but I don't know if she helps that much. Anna and Eve went quiet about it, but things still felt tense, so I wasn't seeing much of my dad or brother and I felt like I was ready to try and fix things. Eve's birthday was in September. I thought the suggestion from my first post were really good, so I went through my mother's paintings and journals and had a coffee table type book made with 20 prints I thought she'd appreciate most and their corresponding entries. It was so fucking hard. I wasn't ready to go so in depth, but I thought it would be worth it. Eve seemed receptive but underwhelmed. I don't know what words I want, but she said thank you and was looking through it. Then after a few minutes, Anna said, all that time for some prints. And then Eve said, it's not the same. I didn't want to fight, but I didn't want to cry either, so I just left right then. I wanted to rip it out of her hands, but I didn't. My dad called me and apologized, but I told him I didn't want to go back home and see Anna or Eve for a while. The biggest thing that changed is that Anna's mum passed just after Thanksgiving. She was sick for years, so it was sad but not shocking, but I think Anna's whole perspective shifted. She sincerely apologized to me a few days after the funeral, and I don't think my trust in her is restored yet, but it's a big step, and I told her that I forgave her, so things are better between us. Even I have barely spoken since her birthday, and she ignored me before the funeral when I told her I was sorry she lost her grandma. I don't know what to do. I don't want things ruined forever, but I want an apology, and I don't know if I'm ever going to get one. I don't want to put in work if she's going to ignore me. She's got an apartment with friends, and she's moving in soon, so I'll be able to visit without awkwardness now, but I'm not happy with how things are still. My lease ended the 30th of the 9th, and I thought maybe I'd be able to move into my mum's house, but I couldn't do it. I've been at an Airbnb and telling myself that I had to move in after the one year because I'm spending way too much on this place and if I sign another lease, I'm just letting it sit there for another year. I'm paid throughout the Airbnb another week, but then I'm going to have to leave. I talked to my best friend and she's going to sublet her apartment and stay with me for a while so I'm not alone. I feel better with her there, but I still don't feel ready. But I absolutely do not want to rent it out or sell, so it has to be now. I dumped that boyfriend really soon after posting because he told me he couldn't believe I was still crying over my mum. Oh, fuck it out. Fuck him. Yeah, absolutely. What an absolute burk. You see someone that you really like or or love and then you see him, you see him grieving over the loss of one of their parents and you go up to him and say, why are you still crying over your mum? What an absolute tit. And there was a couple of comments after this one. So Misfit says, would they be happy if you did give up some paintings now or would they complain about that too? I would just move on. You did a nice thing with a coffee table book. You don't owe her anything. I'm sorry about your mum, love. It does get easier with a lot of time. Not the arsehole. And I agree. I think it does get easier with time. And 
I always I always feel like I'm I'm sort of lecturing people when I talk about this, and I don't mean it in that way. I mean it in a place from love and a place that I deal with it in in the hopes that it may help you know one person down the road. If it does, then you know that's absolutely fantastic, and I'm I'm overwhelmed with it. I've had people tell me, you know, talking about my dad and my mum and family members that I've lost in the past, talking about cancer and stuff like that, that has helped them in, in, in small little ways. And I think that's just absolutely amazing. So if I can overshare my thoughts and, and do that, then I think it's incredible. And I've mentioned it before. The way that I somewhat deal with grief is like just one of my coping ways, I guess, is I like to think about what that person would want. I mean, in the end, it doesn't matter. They're not here anymore, right? But in my mind, I like to think about what they would want for me, how they would want me to be. Both my mum and my dad, when they were here, they were saying, you don't be grieving for me, you know. You crack on with life. That's what I want for you. And I always think of that. I always think about what they want for me, how they would want me to feel. They would want me to live my life, to not to sit there crying, etc., which I do, because I think that's natural. I think that's perfectly healthy to do at the same time. But they would want me to be living my best life. But anyway, one more comment from a Jew who says, this will probably be an unpopular opinion, but I speak as a painter myself. Paintings are somewhat magical items. I completely understand OP's point of view. She doesn't want to part with the paintings just yet. It'd be like losing a piece of your loved one. And it really would be because a painting is a part of the painter's soul. Really. But on the other hand, I completely understand that Eve was disappointed. A print. That's all it is. A copy or there is an image that can bring back beautiful memories but nothing more we can make thousands of copies millions it's just a picture all art collectors know this the soul of the painter lives only in real painting it's an artifact who has real power that's exactly why op can't part with it and she's right not to do it losing a painting can tear our hearts out if we are not ready to part with it it would be an injury to let go of even the smallest drawing it would be like losing her mother again, and it really would be, literally. But Eve is also right to be disappointed. A print has no value, no soul inside. This is what she wants, and rightly so. But she doesn't realize what she's asking. Each painting is a little piece of soul. All together, they create a mosaic. Together, they create the artist. Here and now, here are whole, so each has a measurable value. For now, letting just one go would create an unbearable injury to OP and leave a scar for life. But over time, although all paintings are valuable, naturally some will lose their importance. Not all paintings touch and move us in the same way. So maybe at this point, OP will feel ready to let one go. In a year, or 10, or 50, or never. I would say that is when Eve will can have her piece of art, or not. Not because OP is selfish, not because she doesn't want to share. But because that's how things happen with paintings. I hope things go smoothly for you, OP, and that Eve can understand what this collection is about and accept she will have to be patient and maybe never have one. Everything will depend on whether the day comes what a beautiful little piece of soul can leave on its own without hurting you too much. Incredibly difficult story there. Grief is always a tough one. And, you know, I will just add on that. I never think that my opinion is correct. I value everyone's opinion. I value the comments. I value your opinions as well. They give me different perspectives on life and I like to learn from these things. So now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Put yourself in OP shoes. How do you think you would deal with it? I know it's incredibly difficult, but what do you think? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's have another story from the Am I the Asshole subreddit. And this story comes from Miserable Day 8244 and says, Am I the asshole for kicking my daughter out of my house for being pregnant? I, 45 female, have a 27 year old daughter. She has six kids between the ages 10 and 11 months. There are three different fathers. She receives child support from two of them and she is still with the third one, and they've been for five years. My daughter works part time and her fiance is a chef full time. They have lived with us for the past year and a half. Due to them getting evicted from their last home, the kids in them have our upstairs bedrooms. There's two, but that's still crowded for six children. They're constantly asking me for help with phone bills. My husband and I have asked for no rent, so they'd be able to save money to get a home, which I don't believe they were doing. I've put up with loud voices throughout all hours. 
and waking up at different hours to cater to children because I love my grandchildren. I never complain to my daughter because I believe family is very important. It's just that my children are all grown up. My youngest moved out four years ago and my husband and I had hopes to remodel. We didn't expect them to be living here this long. On Christmas Eve, my daughter gathered us all around and announced they were pregnant with baby number seven. <laughs> oh dear. Everyone was all excited, but I felt dread. That would mean another child in our house with not much room. I looked over at my husband and could tell he felt the same. We discussed later and decided we were going to have to ask him to move out. Last night at dinner, I brought it up to my daughter and her boyfriend and we told them. They have two months to find a place because we cannot have another child here. My daughter started crying, saying she couldn't believe a throw to the streets for having a baby, that this was completely unfair and not enough time. I told her I was sorry. It was painful for me as well, but these living conditions were impossible. She demanded I give her more time or she'd go to the courts, and I told her newsflash, the courts only gives you 30 days. She then said my grandchildren were going to be homeless because I was selfish. She made a Facebook post asking for rooms to rent because she's pregnant and has nowhere to go and her family don't give a shit about her. Am I the arsehole? I'm going to start in the comments with Open Cricket who says not the arsehole but you handled this poorly. You should never have waited until she got pregnant to tell her that this was a deal breaker for you. If six kids weren't a deal breaker, how was she to know the seventh would be? You're setting her up for failure here. She's making terrible decisions. She's a mess of a human, but you've been enabling this for far too long. And now you have seven homeless grandchildren when you could have nipped it in the bud five to six grandchildren ago. Are you prepared to take in your grandchildren if CPS removes them from her care? Hilarious user ID says eight people, soon to be nine, in two rooms for a year and a half is ridiculous. None of those kids have space to call their own or privacy. What the fuck do they spend their money on if they're not paying rent but can't even afford their own phone bill? You're definitely not the asshole. Your daughter needs to take responsibility for the children she keeps bringing into the world and learn to stand on her own two feet. Please tell her to get a copper IUD after this kid, have her tubes tied or get a partner to have a vasectomy because they should not be having any more children they can't afford to care for. Pedestrian Wanderlust says not the asshole. you did them right and they didn't make the most of the opportunity to get on their feet didn't have to put up with their stupidity. I'm sorry, I know it's hard, but you were right to give them a move out date. She can apply for housing assistance through a charity and maybe get some help. P.S. Don't worry about the Facebook smear campaign. Most people can count how many kids your daughter has, know her age, and understand who's at fault. And one more from uncreative user ID who says not the arsehole. A few people mentioned it in the comments. You should have set boundaries a while ago instead of letting your feelings fuel your decisions. You didn't ask for rent money so they could save up for a home. That's on them for not doing so. Your daughter is that type to constantly play the victim when things don't go her way. She has the audacity to say her family doesn't care about her after all you did. Yeah, kick her out to teach her some life lessons. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. I know this is totally off topic, but my mind instantly went, how the fuck are they getting time to have sex with that many kids? <laughs> I'm just like, Wow. The school runs, the lunches, the breakfast, the dinners, the cleaning up around, they're making sure their room's tidy. And then you get to the evening, you must be exhausted after that, unless, of course, grandma's doing it all. Oh, my word. What do you guys make of this situation? Maybe you have a different opinion on a matter, a different solution, maybe. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in the story showing your love not just towards me but towards the ops the other commenters people down in the youtube comments as well it's always absolutely amazing to see so thank you so so much and hopefully i'll see you in the next one take care and much love